Hello. Today in my series on post-colonial concepts, I'll briefly talk about neocolonialism. I had talked about neocolonialism in my recording about neo-imperialism, but I thought I should focus it a little more about its genealogy and where the term came from. So the term was first introduced by Kawami Nkrumah, who was the leader of Ghana as it became independent in one of his crucial works that was published in 1965, which is called Neocolonialism, the last stage of imperialism. I'll post a link to the book in the description. Now you can already tell that the last stage of imperialism part of this um, text comes from the famous uh, essay by Lenin, which, which is about monopoly capitalism and the last stage of imperialism. Now, what he, what Nkrumah argued in his book and eventually also in his public statements was that while actual colonialism had ended, the influence of the colonizing powers still remained in the colonies and in some forms actually became more insidious because it could not be easily discerned. And by that, what he meant was that the economic influence of the former colonial powers still remained, still played a role, and that the old regimes also had a cadre of comprador governments, governments run by people whose sympathies were aligned with the former colonizers. They were part of the native elite who was educated and trained by the colonizers and whose interests were usually at a divergence from their own people. And these were the very people that the former colonizers were now using to exploit the native people of Africa. So the term was very pertinent to Africa and African Pan-African leaders, but it's also used in Latin America as well as in the South Asian uh, conflict. Um, and literally what it means is whenever the former colonies, even after they have left the colony, still have a direct influence in the free and independent nations that are developed after colonialism through their economic policy or through their economic influence, but also through the works and power of the native elite that they leave behind. Now, if you have watched my uh, lecture on Chen Wei Zhu, on Ariel and Caliban, that is the struggle that Chen Wei Zhu also tries to highlight is that the, in the post colony, the biggest struggle is the fight between Ariel, who was left behind by the Europeans, and the Caliban figure, who are the actual native in inheritors of the freedom itself, and how to balance the system in favor of Ariels. Now, in the later stages, post-1980s, and even after the fall of Soviet Union, uh, United States and its influence, both economic and political in the world, is seen as the main influence in this neo-colonial regime. And U.S. does that by actually direct invasion of countries like Iraq and now maybe Iran, but also through its economic policy, not just through aid or through forcing or coercing smaller nations to bend to its will, but by also uh, enticing new and emerging governments to follow its economic policy, also the economic instruments, the Bretton Woods institutions, IMF and World Bank, United States has a lot of say in it. And now increasingly as the US leadership basically claims that whatever they do in the world is to safeguard the American primacy and American privilege in the world. So those policies are seen more and more as neo-imperial and neo-colonial policies. And the reason they become neo-colonial is because they literally, even without physically being there, they can shape the local politics and policies. So overall, um, I think this clarifies the subtle distinction between my earlier take on neocolonialism, but this neocolonialism whose uh, intellectual genealogy lies with the African leaders, especially with the work of Nkrumah, and their insistence that even though the colonial powers leave, their influence lives on 
within the post colonies in the shape of the policies, the economic policies and the local regimes that still promulgate policies and govern that necessarily is not in the interest of their own people, but is in the interest of their former colonizers. And now, of course, in case of the current global world power, United States. These are some of my ideas about this uh, concept. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the description or in the comment section below. And for today, that is all I have. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Thank you.